Hi there folks, in today's demonstration I'm going to show you how you can avoid or at least understand why Power Automate inserts and apply to each. So I've got some examples, I will show you how to build some expressions, how to avoid some common, common errors such as the expressions of type object but it must be a valid array or maybe array elements can only be selected using an integer index but I'll be looking at people pickers, multiple choice fields and in today's example using a SharePoint list. So like always if that's something that interests you please make sure you like and subscribe and without further ado let's jump into my demonstration. So today I'm going to kick things off starting from a SharePoint list and in this list I have 10 items and I have various columns about individual organizations who their main contact is their account manager and the industry they work in. And if we have a quick look at our industry column and go into edit, we can see that I've set it up as a, a choice type, but not only that, if I go into more options, I have enabled multiple selections. And this actually has an impact on how that data is returned to Power Automate and how it's handled in and apply to each. Similarly, if I jump across now onto the account manager and go into edit, open up that more options, we can see I've enabled multiple selections and from that data we can also see I have scenarios of both two managers and one manager being responsible for an individual customer. So jumping onto my flow, I have two pre-configured actions here running in parallel. I have get item and I have get items. And this is the important thing to understand is that obviously on the left hand side my get item is going to return a singular item from a list and on the right hand side I have the plurals action the get items so we're going to return a table of data and so even if we filter that get items knowing that we're only going to return one item we will still be returning a table of data but then would you be surprised to hear that from the get item which I've just told you is singular it's still possible to create apply to each loops so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to insert a compose and I'll throughout the session insert several compose actions just to demonstrate what might happen when you're trying to use the dynamic values within Power Automate. With this get item which I've just told you is a singular, it will turn a single record or, or item. If I was to go and select for instance the company name we can see it's more than happy and it's output the company name and it's always worth with these examples to just examine that expression that's been output we can see that based on the output from get item we are retrieving the body and then the company name if I was to jump across onto the right hand side and insert another compose and go ahead and again choose company name I'll do a search this time from the get items action when I insert that because I'm retrieving multiple items you'll see that Power Automate will immediately insert that compose into an apply to each loop. What you can take away from this is this particular expression which points to the body value is actually an array or a table of data. When you create an apply to each you have to pass an array. If you then want to access values within that array you need to loop through them and so the easiest way of doing that is an apply to each but there are other methods and far more efficient methods if you're dealing with large quantities of data. But let's now save and test this solution and have a look at the flow history. So the flow history is a very useful tool to understand and if I open up the get item and then open up the get items we can see already that there are some differences based on the outputs. So on the left hand side the get item is returning all those individual values from our list in the form of separate fields but you may notice if I scroll back up that the industry and the account manager are showing this funny JSON so we have an array and an object so the square brackets indicate an array and then these curly brackets indicate an object and each of those objects are the equivalent of a row in a table so when it comes to the account manager below here we can see we have a squiggly bracket there followed by a closing squiggly bracket which is our first record in that array or first object and as I scroll down we have a new squiggly bracket followed by a closing squiggly bracket 
and then the closing bracket for the array. So we can see we have two records within that array, which is two objects. And again, it's with these data types that are being returned that will potentially end you up in an apply to each. On the right hand side, you can see that the output is based on the download. And if I click on that, I'll open up another tab and we have the JSON in the form of an object on a grander scale. So much more information than we saw on the get item because now all the data is being returned in the form of this giant object. And within there, there is a value field that contains an array. And so if I just do a quick search for value, you can see that the first one that appears on the search, we have body followed by value. And then after that, we have a square bracket. And that square bracket will indicate the beginning of an array. And that's why we start looping through all the data beneath it. That indicates all the individual items or objects based on those squiggly brackets that we see. So jumping back onto the run history, when we go into the apply to each and look in the compose to, we can see that we have the company name. And if I go down to the bottom of the get item, again, we have that company name because for the get item, I've specified item number one, which again, we can just quickly confirm there. So there's the, the ID. But as obviously we loop through, we have all 10 of these companies, which we can see in that apply to each. So let's go and have a look at another example. So back into edit, what I'd like to achieve now is getting the email addresses of my managers. Again, if I insert a compose, I would like to go and have a look for email. And before I click on it, what do we expect to happen? Well, we've just had a look at the history output. We saw that that output was not just a single string. It was an array. So if I click on it, Power Automate will put us into an apply to each loop. Now, the reason this happens, as we saw in the history, is that the account manager email forms part of an array. And therefore, as we see, Power Automate puts us into an apply to each. But what if we wanted to get all of those email addresses, whether there's one or many, into a string that are, for instance, separated with a semicolon. We could insert a variable, and with that variable, we could then append. So if we were to initialize a variable here, and I could call it string and set the type to string, within that apply to each, we could then add an append to string action, and we could loop through all of those email addresses, and we could append them to this string, like so. Now, whilst this isn't too much of a, a burden in terms of efficiency to our flow, if you imagine doing this on a grander scale, it's soon gonna grind things to a halt. So if you're ever doing any data manipulation, I would seriously advise you consider looking at a select. So as a comparison, what I'm now going to do is, underneath this, is to do exactly that, add a select action. And with that select, my from is gonna be based on the data that comes back from this particular expression. So the great thing about understanding the apply to each is we can now steal some of these expressions that have been used because an apply to each needs to have an array as an input and that's exactly the same for a select. So we know that if we use this account manager expression as the input to our select, we can then change the map to just the email address. And we can understand the expression required for email by again, hovering our mouse, albeit we're not gonna be using items apply to each, but we will replace that with item and the open close brackets followed by the question mark for email. So let's now go and add the account manager into our select. So I'll search for manager and we can see I have the dynamic value there for account manager. And if I hover my mouse over, we can see it's the outputs with the body account manager. Now the easiest way to create a string of those emails is to use this text mode. And with that text mode enabled, we can then go and search for any of the fields that relate to that account manager. So if I put account manager email, for instance, we're now going to be creating an array that just has those, those emails. Now with that array, we need to join them. And there are two ways to do that. You could use a compose or an action I don't use very often, but let's demonstrate it, is the join. 
and so it's the friendly way of joining the values of an array into a string. And so we can take the output from that select, which is now our array of those email addresses, and we can join it with a semicolon. Now in order for us to see the output of our variable from the first apply to each, just as a comparison, I need to insert another compose and then I can choose that string. And if we go in now and save and test that, if we open up that apply to each, we can see it's looped through two records of which we have both Alex and Henrietta, and they will have been appended to a string. And if I look at compose four, we can see there they're com added to that, that string as, as an output. But equally, if we look at that select, which is one action versus potentially however many times it's looped through this apply to each, it's taken the array that has the objects and within that object we have picked out the email address and in return as an output we have this array here of emails. Then by using that join action you can see that we now have those emails joined with a semicolon in the middle and there's nothing else at the end. Now eagle-eyed might have noticed that I haven't created a semicolon list here within our apply to each. That's because I didn't include the semicolon as part of the append to array variable. So I'm going to go and make that change and then retest it. So I'll add in that semicolon there and if we then go and have a look back at the history, if we pop open the compose at the end we can see we now have a semicolon. But we also have a semicolon at the end. The join of course has the semicolon but it does not have a semicolon at the end. So back into edit, I'm now gonna have a look at some examples with our get items. And whilst we're applying or looping here, what I'd like to do is actually just retrieve the first company name from this list. And I can create an expression based on what we see in this apply to each to output just the first company name. If I insert a compose, by looking at these expressions again, we can see that we have the output from body value. So a body value will be our array. And then if we look at the company name, we can see the field name there, which is company name without a space. So when it comes to try and query or output the first record from an array, there is an expression. It's called first. And what first is looking for is, first of all, an array, because it will look for the first record or object from an array. So if I jump back into the dynamic tab, you'll notice that I have both the body and the value, but I know that it's the value that contains my array that I want to look at based on how this apply to each has been constructed. So I can insert that, and at the, at the end of this particular expression now, if I put in a question mark and some square brackets and single quotes, I can type in the name of the field that I'm looking to query. And I know from when I inserted it into that compose, it output company name. So I can add that there in the single quotes and hit OK. Now a common error or a common mistake when constructing expressions or using these things across other actions is seeing an error about values can only be selected by using integer indexes. And this is a perfect opportunity to demonstrate that. Now when constructing your expressions, if for instance, I was to use the same expression as before, so I'll go and just insert a space, dynamic content, pick value. If I was to edit that and include a question mark, square brackets, single quotes, and then company name. At this point, of course, I'm trying to retrieve the value for company name from an array, but that array has multiple objects, so how do I select that, that specific company name? If I hit OK, the expression is save fine, but if I then go and save and test, we can compare the output of both five and six. So you'll see from the flow history that five has run, six has failed as expected. If I pop open five, We've got Abata, which is our uh, first company name from all the items within our list within Get Items. And if I pop open six, you can see an error message here about you cannot evaluate this because company name cannot be selected. Array elements can only be selected using an integer index. And that's where that first expression comes into play and in that it allows you to select the first object from an array. But equally, if you want to select the first or the fourth, you can use an integer index. So let's have a quick look at how to do that also. So back into edit, if I pop open this expression, we can either wrap the expression that I've now highlighted on screen with that expression first in order to retrieve that first object and therefore the first item from our list, or we can use integer indexes. 
And you do that simply by adding a couple of square brackets after our array, so we know that the value is our, our array, and then we can insert an integer. The only confusing thing here is to remember that the integer index starts from zero. So if you're looking to get the first, you can insert zero. If you're looking to get the second, it's one. If you're looking to get the fifth, it's four. And so if I update that and save it, this time around, the expression will run and it will retrieve the fifth item based on that integer being four. So if we pop open our compose, we can see that we have Oyuba. And if I go into my apply to each and jump forward to number five and pop open that compose, you can also see that we've got Oyuba. And that demonstrates how we can query a company name from an array based on an integer index. So finally, what I'd like to do is to output the industries. And if I go into the inputs there and do a quick search for my industry, of course, it's a multiple choice. I would like to get the values. If I select that, we end up with another apply to each. I can tell you right now that this isn't going to work because the input here is actually an object. And if I test and uh, show it to you, you'll see the error message that I mean. So that's failed there with this input is of type object. The result must be a valid array. So of course we can fix that ourselves. In order to better understand this, I'm gonna pop open the get item. And if we look at industry, we can see that industry is an array. So we can use that as an input to a select or to an apply to each. And then the value is one of the keys within an object. So you remember each instance or each loop of an apply to each needs to go through an object. If I go back into edit, I could of course just make this input here for the apply to each to the industry, which we saw there is an array. So that's a completely valid solution now. It would allow us to retrieve those values and it would create a loop and we could insert an initialized variable above and then append to variable. But for comparison, if I use a select, I can insert the industry and then in the key, if I turn it into text mode, I can insert the value for our industry. Now incorrectly, again, Power Automate tries to insert us into an apply to each, but I can actually drag that select out. I can get rid of this apply to each and we now have those industry values in an array. So using the join or the join expression, I'm going to insert a compose. I can type in join and with that, I can select the output and join with a semicolon again in single quotes. If I go ahead and save and test that, we'll now just end up with all the industries for a particular item in that loop separated by a semicolon. In all my examples, I only have one industry but it's allowed us to select the values and it enables multiple choice to be selected going forward, but within a nested apply to each loop because we're retrieving all the get items. So if we pop open that apply to each, we can see that we have that select and it's taken the array as input, it's output the individual values from within the objects. And then in that compose eight that you see here, I've done a join and because there's only one, there's no semicolon because it only includes the semicolons between all the values. If we go into the apply to each, we'll be able to see that retail has been outputted too as a result of looping through all of the individual values. So that marks the end of my demonstration. I hope you've thoroughly enjoyed that. It would be great to hear in the comments below. And like always, please make sure you like and subscribe. And I hope to see you again sometime soon. Thanks for watching.